Here. Mr. Cater? Here. Ms. Egan? Here. Ms. Hazard? Here. Ms. Healy? Here. Mr. McCosker? Here. Ms. Young? Presente. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Would you please stand for the Color Guard presentation and the Pledge of Allegiance? Sir, permission to present the colors. Present the colors. Thank you, sir. For present arms colors. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Colors. Order, arms, for order, arms, colors, right, face, forward, march, forward, right, face, forward, march. We'd like to thank the Colonial Forge High School's Army JROTC for presenting the colors for us tonight. The Color Guard cadets are Cadet Casey, Cadet Estrada, Cadet Pincumbre, Cadet Swaye, and Cadet Swartz. The instructors of this JROTC program are Colonel Mark Strong and Sergeant Major Lee Wortham. Thank you for joining us. Um, before we um, have a motion to approve the agenda, I'd like to um, ask Dr. Kisner to uh, make an announcement of an appointment that the board approved uh, after a special uh, meeting this evening. Uh, um, good evening. I'm very excited to announce the new principal for T. Benton Gale Middle School will be Ms. Katie Werner. Ms. Werner, most recently, and currently is the assistant principal at Mountain View High School and has served as the assistant principal at H.H. Pool Middle School for three years. In addition, she taught high school English in a division for 11 years. She has many accomplishments, but I just want to quickly just mention a few things during the interview process that I was very, very impressed with. She has a remarkably strong instructional understanding of best practices. She recognizes the importance of supporting and growing her staff. She mentioned more than once the importance of equity and access. That's an issue that she wants to focus on. And she, while she was at Poole Middle School, she took um, a significant responsibility of overseeing the programs for children with disabilities. So I think uh, we made a remarkable um, uh, decision. I thank the board for approving it. And I know she's in the in the room, so if you could stand up and let's all welcome to the room. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kisner, and congratulations, Ms. Warner. We'll we'll miss you at Mountain View, but uh, we're very very fortunate to have you at Gale. That brings us to the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move okay. that we approve the agenda with one amendment to move information item number 1107 um, down to discuss the school board member code of conduct to action. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Um, I second the amendment, but um, I would also, uh, if, if uh, Ms. Young is okay with it, um, I would like to delete the exhibit in 1107 that comes from Stafford Growing Pains blog. And this is not um, just, I've spent much of my career uh, instructing students on how to decide whether or not something is a credible source. Um, and I have no way of knowing if a personal blog which undergoes no peer or editorial review is accurate and unbiased. And so, um, the blog posting was not produced by school staff, and therefore I would request that it be deleted. I'm okay and, with that. And if I could also ask that we um, 
agenda item 10.04 uh, regarding the elementary school capacity be moved to 10.02 so that we do the methodology before we were to uh, examine the CIP large projects or the CIP approvement. It seems that we should be approving methodology before we approve the follow-on projects. Okay, is that acceptable? It's you? acceptable to Chair, me, thank Dr. you. Chase? Yes. All right, any uh, further discussion? Though so all in favor of the uh, motion to approve the agenda as stated, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. No. Madam Clerk, would you poll the board, please? Dr. Chase? Aye. Mr. Cater? No. Ms. Egan? No. Ms. Kaiser? Aye. Ms. Healy? Yes. Mr. McCosker? Yes. Ms. Young? Yes. Madam Chair, the motion passes. All right. That brings us to awards and recognitions. We'd like to recognize Ms. Cherie Johnson, Director of Strategic Communication and Community Engagement, for presentation of awards. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Kistner. I am here this evening to thank the community partners that teamed up with the Office of Strategic Communication and Community Engagement to help the Collect for Kids Back to School Supply Drive to be a huge success. Community Engagement Manager Ms. Sharice Taylor led the event, which took place on August 29th at the Courthouse Community Center. Approximately 65 volunteers packed over 600 backpacks with school supplies to ensure that all Stafford County Public School students have the materials they need to succeed. ABC7 News reporter Kid O'Shea was there all morning long with live coverage, and for the first time in several years, SCPS took the lead in this community engagement effort. However, collaboration with all stakeholders is key. We couldn't do it without our community partners. The Collect for Kids School Supply Drive is a true community event that involves many organizations who are represented here today and many others who could not attend. Thank you, Superintendent Dr. Scott Kisner, School Board Member Ms. Pamela Young, and Associate Superintendent Ms. Pamela Kale for attending this event, even though it was very early in the morning. We would also like to thank our SCPS staff, including the school counselors and teachers who stuffed the backpacks and assisted with the coordination to make this event a success. Thank you to Stafford County Government Parks and Recreation for providing the location for the event. And we would also like to say a huge thank you to the communication team and Mr. Larry Fox for helping us move all of those supplies to the community center. We really appreciate it. At this time, I would like to recognize our community partners Representatives, please come forward when your business or organization is called. Audience, please hold your applause until the end. I'd like to start with Right to the Root, Sweet Frog, Vanquisher the Podcast, Give Back Team Realtors of Caldwell Banker Elite, Caldwell Banker Elite Brokerage, University of Mary Washington, Costco Wholesale, Lidos, Central Rappahannock Regional Library, Cutting Up Barbershop LLC, Mount Arrett Church, Jeff Rouse Swim and Sports Center, Mom's Club of Stafford. Crazy for Gaming Video Game Theater. The Rotary Club of Stafford. <clears throat> Michael C. Smith State Farm Insurance. Rappahannock Area YMCA. North Stafford Rotary Club. RPI Group Incorporated, Apple Federal Credit Union, Orange Theory Fitness, Stafford County Parks, Recreation and Community Facilities, the Sports Division, and last but not least, Mr. Eli Haney, a student organizer. This was the first year we had a student organize a supply drive and participate.
Again, thank you for your support, and we look forward to many more partnerships in the future. Thank you. Okay, now we'll take a picture. <laughs> Would any of you like to come down, Dr. Kistner? Any of you like to come down for the picture? Dr. Oh, I'm never shy for pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you can photobomb them, Miss Young. <laughs> well, since I was there, <laughs> why not? Thank you all so much. Thank you again. Thank you. We got golf on Wednesday. You could show up on Wednesday. Yeah, we do. Somebody take this basket away from me. <coughs> thank you, Ms. Johnson, and thank you for all of your and your staff's work in coordinating that. That has a huge impact on our, our schools and our, and our students. Um, that brings us to special presentations, and this is an annual presentation we have. For, and this year it's for the 2018 Band Together to Fight Hunger. So Mrs. Bingham and Mrs. Bellino, you want to come down with your crew? Good evening, Chairwoman Healy. Good evening, Vice Chair McOsker. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Kisner and members of our board. On behalf of our five band parents associations, I am so excited to get to introduce to you our 2018 drum majors who are going to be leading this year's Band Together to Fight Hunger. To my right and your left, we're gonna start from Brook Point High School, Miss Lauren Black. Representing Colonial Forge, we have Cole Ramos and Caroline Pearson. From Mountain View High School, we have Miss Lisa Hurdigan. From North Stafford High School, we have Miss Erica Johnson. Mm -hmm. And from over on my left, representing Stafford High School, Miss Lauren Surrett, a former student. And our only returning drum major this year, Miss Michelle Sully. And these young ladies and gentlemen have a very exciting message for you in our community. We are here tonight to cordially invite each of you to join us Monday evening, November 5th, at 7 p.m. at Mountain View High School for our eighth annual Band Together to Fight Hunger. If it should rain, this event will be held Monday, November 12th. Gates open at 5.30 p.m. So you have plenty of time to drop off your donations and enjoy dinner while you wait for the performances to begin at 7 p.m. We hope you all are planning to come and join us too. Band Together to Fight Hunger is an exciting showcase of our own talented musicians from all of our high schools. This is the only time during the year where in less than two hours you can have the opportunity to hear and see all five of our high school marching bands in concert. It is also a night when we have a chance to get back to the community. Non-perishable canned food donations and monetary donations are greatly appreciated. Last year, with the support of our business partners and attendees, we were able to provide over 30,000 meals back to our surrounding community. This year, our goal is to provide 35,000 meals to the citizens in our area. Did you know that Virginia only has seven food banks in the entire state? Our Fredericksburg Regional Food Bank serves Caroline, Fredericksburg, King George, Spotsylvania, Stafford, and Locust Grove. They are able to reach and support 57 school age program partners. It's incredible that we are able to touch the lives of so many adults and children in all of these surrounding counties by giving back for just one night. 
Additionally, by partnering with the Fredericksburg Regional Food Bank, we are able to reach 66 food, different food pantries, 23 fresh connection agencies, 16 USDA pantries, 13 mobile pantries, and 47 Food for Life commodities supplemental food program sites, and 27 volunteers. Our food bank is the storehouse for food and other products collected. From there, donations are distributed to our local food pantries and are given directly to the people in our surrounding communities. We are counting on you to join us on November 5th with your non-perishable food donation. Your donation goes to the Fredericksburg Regional Food Bank, who in turn supports our 13 Stafford food pantries, three mobile food pantries, and 12 school-age program partners. After our on-field presentation to the Fredericksburg Regional Food Bank attendees will be treated to the grand finale when all our bands will band together to fight hunger. Over 400 plus high school band students will be playing on the field together and it's pretty amazing. It's also one of the highlights of the year. Please don't forget to bring your non-perishable food donation for the Fredericksburg Regional Food Bank too. Thank you for your time this evening and your continued commitment to our band programs. We look forward to seeing you on Monday, November 5th at 7 p.m. at Mountain View High School. Detail present arms. Detail order arms. Dr. Kisner didn't have this where he came before. This is what he came oh to Stafford for, gosh. just Way so you know. You go. I got it in my calendar. <laughs> oh, this, <laughs> well, the, if, if anyone in this room or watching has not been to this event, I strongly <laughs> urge you to go. It, the young lady said it was pretty amazing. It is absolutely amazing. It is an incredible display from our schools. There is no competition here. Everybody is playing together and they're working for a great cause and it is an incredible event. So I encourage everyone to come and hope to they exceed their goal of 35,000 meals. All right, that brings us to citizen uh, comments. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the public hearing on the school board's fiscal year 2020 budget priorities. Individuals wishing to comment on the school board's FY20 budget priorities may do so at this time. Speakers shall identify themselves by name, address, and organizational affiliation if the spokesperson represents an organization. Speakers shall also announce the purpose topic of their comments. Three minutes shall be allotted to speakers the chairman reserves the right to restrict the total citizen comment received at any particular meeting to a predetermined maximum number of minutes with the approval of the board. Citizen comment which is profane, abusive, or which threatens imminent physical harm shall be ruled out of order by the chairman. Although the board provides the opportunity for citizen comment individuals desiring to register complaints against division employees or division program services or activities, may also utilize the procedures outlined in Stafford County Public School Policy 1113 public complaints. There are two people who signed up for the public hearing on the fiscal year 2020 budget priorities. I'm going to call their names. If there's anyone else who wishes to address this topic, um, you, you'll be able to come forth after the first two uh, people. The first uh, person is Christian Peabody. And the second is Alan Watkins. Hi, Dwayne. Hi, Jamie. They still here? Oh, well, we're here. Good. Jamie? Or right, Dwayne here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm here. Sorry, it takes me a second to get off mute. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
My name is Christian Peabody. I'm the president of the Stafford Education Association and the music teacher at Falmouth Elementary. To the members of the board and the superintendent and the educators in Stafford County Public Schools, as we begin discussions about the upcoming, the upcoming Stafford County Public School budget and funding priorities, the SCA wishes to take this time to announce its year-long compensation and recommendation plan, which is a 5% across the board increase for every county employee. The last four years simply have not worked, and Stafford continues to hemorrhage educators we cannot afford to lose anymore. The historical narrative has been that things could always be worse, but in one of the richest counties in the Commonwealth in the nation, things should be a lot better. SEA's relentless lobbying efforts last year resulted in increased funding for both the division and the county, specifically in protecting minimal compensation increases. However, that was only a tourniquet, and it won't hold for long with the media market model still in place. The county administrator spoken about its impropriety given our needs and the overwhelming majority of employees who responded to SEA's comparative compensation model survey have stated unequivocally they no longer want a continuation of the median market scale. It has left a dangerously gangrenous presence on the morale in our division and a plan to excise it for a better solution needs to be considered immediately. And a 5% across the board increase would be that solution. It would be an equitable infusion needed to shock the system back into life and a prosthetic that leads to division-wide rehabilitation by aggressively and realistically targeting educator retention and recruitment through compensation. 5% is the hard in pocket cash meantime contingency. It's the meantime contingency while your educators negotiate increasing workloads due to recruitment and retention issues. It's the meantime contingency while your educators deliver quality instruction while continuing with growing class sizes, increasingly disturbing student behaviors, and awaiting desperately needed school construction, which have virtually no timely or significant alleviation in sight. It's the meantime contingency while your educators continue to reach through the students who fight against them every day, but who years down return saying things like, if only you had been my parent at that time. Thank you for holding me beyond what I or anyone else believed in myself. I almost committed suicide, but your class was the only thing I had to hold on to. Or because of you, I decided to become an educator. It's also the meantime contingency why your educators are now required to prepare themselves daily to mitigate an active shooter scenario at any given moment and with their lives if necessary. Their pay is simply not commensurate with the potential burden and sacrifice they are asked to make. And because of that alone, they and their families are owed the financial security equal to their burden for delivering that level of selfless service, especially if they may die while doing it. One year's radical and proactive shift in compensation alone would beget a potential for even further proactive and progressive considerations that could be made in order to halt the continued bleeding of staff and align Stafford County Public Schools with tangible actions that make it begin to stand out once again as one of the most desirable divisions in the Commonwealth and not the nation. Um, my compensation task force chair will be speaking to you next. We've provided you a copy of what we will be sending out and working with you hopefully with as is Ms. Ford. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Peabody. Uh, Alan Watkins. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Kisner, and all others present. I'm Al Watkins, an acquire resident, a Stafford teacher, and a member of the SEA. As I have in the past, I'd like to once again speak regarding the need to properly and effectively compensate Stafford County school employees. It's heartwarming to hear that board members, that they consider compensation being among the highest priorities as the budget planning process takes place. The refrain of recruit and retain has been heralded for many years. Yet, a nationwide teacher shortage grows. Average teacher pay in our state continues to fall well below the nation's average. And Stafford County constantly lags behind many neighboring counties. The number of current teacher positions still not filled this year is terrible. The number of teachers who have left this county is likewise terrible. Every one of us knows of an excellent teacher who is now teaching somewhere else. The reasons are obvious. Starting salary here in Stafford now stands at $44,075, the highest that it has ever been. That's a good thing. However, if I were to ask you what a year of experience a Stafford teacher finally achieves the milestone of earning $50,000, what year would that be? In Prince William, to the north, that would be in year number four. In Alexandria, it's in year two. In Fairfax, the starting pay for a first-year teacher is $50,000.
And Loudon first year teachers make even more than that. Even in Albemarle, a teacher can reach $50,000 in their seventh year. But here in Stafford, a teacher does not make 50K until their 16th year. But the real embarrassing, hurtful part of that, way back in 2007, 2008, 11 years ago, a teacher made over $50,000 at step number 14, a two year shorter time span that exists here today. Those are only a few of the disheartening statistics when exploring our compensation model. For example, in Prince William, for the first four years, each yearly step increase is 1.7% higher than the previous year. For the next nine years, each teacher's pay increase is 3.3%. And from that point on, up to the top level of their 29th steps, each teacher receives an additional 3.2% yearly. If Prince William's percentage of increase was applied to our starting salary here in Stafford, a Stafford teacher would make over $101,000 in their 29th year. They now make just over $70,000, over $30,000 less than in Prince William. That's hurtful and it's motivationally damaging. A new compensation model must be created, hoping to on a year-to-year -year basis to provide a 2.5% cost of living will not cut it. Even a planned 5% raise for several years will not ultimately cut it. As I said before, the 38-year 30 30 experience level was the worst thing we've ever accepted. With full VLS retirement enabled after 30 years, Having a scale that extends beyond that puts the top of the scale beyond the reach of most teachers. That should never be and it should never have been done. Hopefully it was not the intent to always leave we horses reaching out for the carrot that we can never obtain. Only by working with the Board of Ed, the Board of Supervisors, other elected officials, and the SEA can Stafford hope to recruit and retain teachers and other employees. I and the other SEA members are more than willing to assist in creating a new compensation model, a new plan to truly recruit and retain the best and the brightest. We are reaching out to you. Please reach back. Thank, Thank you, you for your Rockins. time. Is there any... <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to address the board on the fiscal year 2020 budget priorities? Um, we have a sign-in sheet, Mr. Waldowski, after you finish speaking. Paul Waldowski, 8 Pickett Lane in the gerrymandered Rock Hill District. Two of them are missing, huh? That gives me an idea. Um, I think your stipend is $12,000 a year, so I propose in the 2020 budget, if we only had five school board members, that'd be $24,000 a year. You know, when I was a kid growing up, when you were a school board member, even the superintendent, you did it for public service. You didn't do it for stipends. Just an observation, I only heard a little bit of the last speaker's uh, speech, but one of the words that caught my eye was um, carrots. And I love the English language. We're not talking about those beautiful things on your rings. You know, we're talking about those nice orange carrots. And having been retired military, one of the things the military does is they keep on putting out carrots because you're young and dumb and you keep reaching for them and you think, oh man, maybe I might make Sergeant Major or maybe I might make Chief Master Sergeant or maybe I might just be a commission officer and become major disaster for a general nuisance. It's just amazing how things parallel between the military and civilian life. And in the military, we do a lot of things about teaching. And we're teaching the next generation to fill the seats, and that's why we all want them to get PhDs. 
you know, public high school diplomas. We're not in the parochial school business. We're in public. We're not in the homeschooling or private schools or even the privileged. You know, that's a PhD too, a privileged high school diploma. That's what John F. Kennedy Jr. got, just so you know, trying to be fair. Now, as you know, you change the school year, so you need to change the um, assets that you're going to need because it's going to be hot and sweaty in August. Because I stay in air conditioning. You know, when I was working, I always took my birthday off. My birthday was August 16th, just so you know. Elvis died in 1977 when I was 25. And I called my mom and I told her, Mom, I'm all shook up because I'm a Beatles fan. Um, Mr. Waldowski, could you please sign in? Yes. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board on the fiscal year 2020 budget priorities? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing on the budget priorities and come back to the citizen comment period of our meeting. I'm going to have to read this little blurb again because Mr. McOsker is in here to read it for me. Um, it may sound repetitive because it's the same as we read before. But individuals wishing to comment at this time may do so by responding to the general invitation by the chairman. Speakers shall identify themselves by name, address, and organizational affiliation if the spokesperson represents an organization. Speakers shall also announce the purpose topic of their comments. Three minutes shall be allotted to speakers. The chairman reserves the right to restrict the total citizen comment received at any particular meeting to a predetermined maximum number of minutes with the approval of the board. Citizen comment which is profane, abusive, or which threatens imminent physical harm shall be ruled out of order by the chairman. Although the board provides the opportunity for citizen comment, citizens, individuals desiring to register complaints against division employees or division programs, services, or activities may also utilize the procedures outlined in Stafford County Public School Policy 1113 public complaints. We have five people who've signed up. I'm going to call those names first. And after these uh, five speak, we can have anyone else who would less like to address the board. The first speaker is Michelle Goshom, and the second is Nicole Nance. Hi, my name is Michelle Goshorn. I live at 20 Fletcher Drive in the Falmouth di District. I wasn't planning on speaking tonight. I feel like I've been up here a lot lately. Um, but there is a habit in Stafford County, especially within political circles, of acting shocked when your actions result in certain consequences. So I'm here to make sure that you understand what changing the capacity number says to all of us. I've spoken to you about capacity many times. I mean, a lot. Uh, and I know that everyone wants to be clear with me that you're not changing the methodology. Okay, I'll give you that. You're using the same Excel workbook that you were using before. O okay. Um, what you're changing are the numbers to determine the capacity. And let me be clear, I don't think that aligning the capacity numbers to the staffing numbers is a bad idea. I actually think that's a really good idea. I don't think a lot of us knew that there were staffing numbers and that there were other numbers. So I, I support aligning those too. I just think you should have lowered the staffing numbers to meet to the capacity numbers, not the other way around. Staffing numbers are driven by funding that has to be balanced on other budgetary constraints. So aligning program capacity to a bare bones funded budget creates staffing levels, just gave the Board of Supervisors another victory at the cost of class size, and doesn't allow for any future planning. So I want to be crystal clear about what you're saying. If you vote yes to this, you don't get to say that you are for smaller class size. You just don't, plain and simple. You are saying to that parent who calls to complain at the beginning of the year, I support having 26 kids in your first grade classroom. An average, mind you, an average, not a cap, not a limit. It's the average in that classroom. You are saying to that teacher, I support having 27 fourth graders in your classroom. Have you seen what 27? or 28 or 29 kids look like in a classroom, because I have. I worked at Falmouth when in fourth grade year we had 26, 27 in those classes. It was not pretty. Do you know what it does to a PE? Because they'll have 50 or 55 or 60 in that gym. 
what it does to the music room and to the library. In some of these schools you have now, you're reading specialists in the library, and now you're gonna have groups of 27, 28, I mean, there just is not room. I worked at Falmouth when the fourth grade was at 27, 28 per, per class. My middle son was in that grade level. It wasn't a good environment for our students. It wasn't a successful year for him. It did not set our teachers up for success. I know the study says different things about class sizes, but the SEA just did a survey of the elementary teachers about class, class sizes and shared the results with you. I haven't seen the results, so I really don't like to speak on them, but I'm going to take a wild guess that the survey didn't say they wanted larger class size. I mean, I'm just guessing, but I, I think I probably am right. Parents don't want larger class sizes. Students don't want larger class sizes. Para specialists and admin don't want larger class sizes. No one but the Board of Supervisors wants larger class sizes. But if you vote yes tonight, so do you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nicole Nance. Good evening, I'm Nicole Nance. Um, I did not plan on speaking. My son came here to do the ROTC color guard piece, so I'm very unprepared. However, I live in a Hartford di district. I have four teenagers who attend Colonial Forge <coughs> High School. Um, I live in um, Colonial Forge subdivision. And we have a hill that is maintained by Stafford schools that is never maintained. Um, our subdivision maintains part of it, but then most of that hill is overgrown. Also, that is the way that our kids go to school up that hill, and there's no safe way for them to go to school. There is construction, of course, going on on, um, on Courthouse Road, and all those teenagers walk up that hill. I had two kids this year who were on crutches who had to walk up that hill because there was no sidewalk and there's no sidewalk up that hill and there's no sidewalk around. So I'm asking the board to do something because we have a whole neighborhood of kids who walk up woodcutters and cut stone road to go up into Colonial Forge. And no reasonable teenager, once they finish that construction, is going to come out of their house and walk all the way around down Courthouse Road just to go to the high school. So that has been a concern um, for us we bring it up in all, um, our HOA meetings. I'm just a private citizen. However, I am a concerned parent for my, the kids in my neighborhood and my own four children who attend Colonial Forge. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Melissa Larson. And after Ms. Larson is Thomas, and I'm not sure if this is Jones. I signed up the um, voting district is Stafford. That's Thomas Jones. That was Melissa. Oh, Jones. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jones. The speaker after Ms. Larson will be then Christian, Christian Kane. Hi, my name is Melissa Larson and I'm from the Famous District. I haven't been up here in a while, but I thought I should really come tonight and speak. I don't understand why some members of the school board are suggesting that Ms. Healy is somewhat not fit to preside over the upcoming redistrict of elementary schools. I have known Ms. Healy for many years. She has always put the needs of the children first. Like when the new Stafford High School was being built, adding and deleting classes were going on. The automobile class in particular was going to be deleted. When my own previous school board member would not help, I went to Ms. Healy and she stepped up to the plate. She listened and asked important questions about this automobile class. I told her since she wasn't really my representative, could she just give me some advice on how to go forward to keeping this class? She just smiled and looked at me and said, she represented the entire county, not just her constituents. That impressed me. She was ready to listen and think of the students that were taking this automobile class and the ones that wanted to take this class. 
the school board did vote and the auto class is still at Stafford High School today. <coughs> Ms. Healy has been through the redistrict process before and has a lot of experience that we should be taking advantage of, not suppressing it. Like my mother always used to tell me, people in glass houses should not throw stones. Thank you so much. Hello, I first want to apologize for my voice. <laughs> it is that first month of school when the kids bring home germs. Um, my name is Kristen Kanu and I live at Seven Crimson Way in the Falmouth District. It's strange to identify myself um, by my district since I live in England Run, which means my neighborhood consists of Falmouth, Hartwood, Rocky Run, Ferry Farm, and Margaret Brent. So I say I'm part of the Falmouth District basically because the children on my street or in my section of the neighborhood go to Falmouth. I want to make a few comments on the elementary school redistricting, but first I want to make it very clear that I'm speaking out of what is best for our county and not what is best for me personally, because to be honest, if I was only thinking about my family, I wouldn't be standing here. My daughter goes to Falmouth, which I believe is the cream of the crop schools, <laughs> um, from the administration to the office staff, teachers, par teachers paras, specialists, the custodians, um, every, every bit of that school. Um, and truly, it's actually my fear that with the uh, redistricting, my street or section or whatever you want to look at when you look at that map of England Run is going to be knocked out of the Falmouth District. But here I am advocating for what is best for the county and not just what is best for me. When the redistricting of Falmouth Elementary took place back in, I want to say it was 2017, for the 2017-18 school year, there were three board members uh, Scott Hirons, Jamie Decatur, and Chris Connolly, who visited and walked through the halls of Falmouth to see the design of the school building in order to make the best possible decision for the kids, the teachers, administration, transportation, everybody that was going to be involved uh, with that redistricting. And although the visits were not done while school was in session, which would have been optimal, I do believe it gave them a little further insight as to what Falmouth could and could not handle. That being said, in the best interest of all that is involved in the current elementary redistricting, I am challenging each of you to visit every elementary school, walk those halls while the school is in session before making any recommendations. Furthermore, the importance of looking at the operational capacity versus the de design capacity must be taken into serious, serious consideration. However, that doesn't mean that I in suggest increasing the classroom size in order to fit more students into that capacity. I, I personally know of no research that indicates that having a larger classroom size regarding students increases academic success or decreases behavioral issues. I urge you to do what is best for the community and not just what is best for you um, personally. I want to end on this. Just don't take the absence of parents at these meetings as an assumption that they don't care. I'm sure that there are some who, who blind, blindly just trust, um, but there's also some who's parents are deployed, they're serving our country, and so the other parent has to stay home, or the single parent, or the parent that has a chronic illness, um, and so they are exhausted at the end of the day, and I'm just speaking from personal experience with that one. So don't, don't look at their absence as apathy. Thank you very much. Again, I apologize. Thank you. All right, no one else has signed up to speak. Is there any, oh, anyone else who wishes to address the board? And anyone who addresses the board from this point, if you could please sign in um, with your name and address. The people, the reason we have these signed in is the people who signed in in advance already have that information for the record. 
Oh, you have to sign in again, Mr. Waldowski, after you speak. This is a separate uh, opportunity. Really? You have rules? <laughs> Surprise. I'm retired. I don't follow rules. Paul Waldowski, 8 Picket Lane, Federal Holiday Today, National Voters Registration Day. Every day is a federal holiday for me. You know, last time I was here, many people didn't know. I had this on my desk July 26th. The new superintendent was coming. And then I must have did foreshadowing because two days after sep September 11th, September 13th, you're going to visit all the schools. And we even have a couple people here who got FaceTime, we call that in the military. Went to see the general officer. Who knows, they might become major disaster, your exec officer. Ah, uh, insanity, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. That's what you're doing in redistricting. You don't know nothing about it. You don't have a master's degree in operations research. You don't know about the variance. You don't know how to use the census aspect. And just because one person says that you have one type of data doesn't mean anything. Average means mediocre. That's what we do in mathematics. Average is mediocre. Just simply amazing what we're doing. As you know, I am the chairman of the 2030 Cicadas. Uh, unfortunately, some of my students were wiped out off Shelton Shop Road on the new subdivision called Shelton Woods. I'll have to send you a picture. It's pretty interesting on uh, what's going on. As you all know, I am running for public office. My bumper sticker says Waldowski 2019, just to annoy you. <laughs> I'm not running. <laughs> just to make you all, because I was going to make Stafford great again. That was the whole idea, because there'd be no fake news that way. Golly. Now, I'm going to address Falmouth once and for all, so you all know about it. OK, we're in a commonwealth. I'm tired of going to Route 1, coming from Mountain View, and I get to see Falmouth on the sign and Stafford. Why does Falmouth have it? Where's the sign for the Garrisonville District, the Rock Hill District, the Aquila District? I just want fairness. Lady Justice has a blindfold. She doesn't wear a pirate's patch on the right eye to favor Falmouth. It also says Stafford is to the right. Just an observation. Now, I've told the Board of Supervisors, especially the chairman from Falmouth, the town of Falmouth, 1726, I'm more than happy to make that a town during the redistricting process. She can run for mayor. You can get a school board member. If you look at the schools by district, you have seven schools there. Man, we have seven days in a week. God's on your side. Thank you. Mr. Baldowski, would, would you consider signing in, Mr. Wadowski? Please. Mayor Chase. Although we, we, we got we know it's a picket lane, but for the record. <laughs> That's a hard act to follow, my goodness. In, in the Rock Hill District. <laughs> the Rock Hill District. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Again, hard act to follow. Um, I'm Dana Brown. I live at 41 St. Williams Way, um, and I'm here to speak about item 1107. Um, but I think before you all start speaking tonight, you might want to just remind yourselves what the definition of slander and libel are, and note the, de the distinction between the two. Slander means to make false and damaging statements about someone that damages their reputation, and libel means a published false statement that is damaging to a, public, to a person's reputation or a written defamation. It means one's verbal and one's written. Um, there seems to be some very personal ill will on behalf of some of you toward Miss Healy. It's so personal that it's reminiscent of the movie Mean Girls. Um, please try and be professional, or at least, at least do your best to pretend. Um, my mother must have been friends with Miss Larson's because she taught me the same thing when I was little. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, and to do unto others and treat them like you'd like to be treated. If you guys really want to foster good relations with the Board of Supervisors, First of all, don't act like you're entitled to all the money. When they give you money for teacher raises, make sure they get it. Get rid of stuff you don't need and quit spending money on it. Make better spending decisions with the money they give you. And don't storm out of meetings like you're having a tantrum. Um, if you do some of that, I bet you things are going to get a lot better. I live and vote in the Rock Hill District, and we've been very lucky to have a real attorney on the board. It's come in very handy on numerous occasions during these meetings. 
And I'd also like to remind everybody how our system of government works. We the people get to elect our own representatives. That means Rock Hill voters pick their own representative to speak for them. And as evidenced by repeated overwhelming election results in the 66th percentile in 63, Rock Hill seems to like the job Ms. Healy is doing representing all of Stafford's students. Some of you seem to have a very personal ax to grind with Ms. Healy, and I hope this is not your way of trying to subvert the will of the majority voters in the Rock Hill District and not allow Ms. Healy to speak for us. If you want to talk about the school board code of conduct, you should be concerned over the appearance of unprofessional social media posting. We have a student code of conduct regarding cyberbullying, and I know our teachers and principals work hard trying to teach our kids social media etiquette, like think before you post. I think some of you could benefit from that advice and need a code of conduct of your own. Some of the things you post are very unprofessional and libelous. It's conduct unbecoming a school board member. We need to have a higher standard. It's embarrassing and you're not setting a good example for our students. It's possible that you're not aware how, you're, how you sound. You know, I'd hate to have to come up here and, and, and read your posts aloud. That would be embarrassing for all of us. Please take a, some time to look at your policy and, and, and look at that about social media etiquette. Thank you. Thank you. Did Mr. Waldowski take our pen? Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? Good evening, Chairwoman Healy and all of those assembled. Demetria Singleton, Stafford County resident. I'm in the Rock Hill District. Ditto to what this lady just said. Now, I hadn't seen the post that she's referring to, but I've seen posts before, and I totally agree with what she just said. So you all are here representing the school district. You are here representing the children that go to school in this county. I have a niece that goes to school in Rock Hill District, and I would just like to say about Mrs. Healy, I've known her for years. She's always been someone we can depend on. If there's a problem we call, she takes care of it. I've worked with her on the health committee for many years as well, and she's taking care of that as well. So I'm here tonight to support her and to say, please, you all represent this county. Again, you represent our youth that attend schools here so act accordingly because they're looking at you, okay? So I know, like she said about a code of conduct, there should be a code of conduct for you all as well. So appreciate what you all are doing. Let's do it in good order and thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the board? Good evening. My name is Clark Lemming. Uh, greetings to members of the school board, Mr. Superintendent. I'm the lawyer that's prepared the lawsuits that has somehow crept their way into your agenda and your information package. Apparently, there is the suggestion that because Ms. Healy is a member of the same firm that files these lawsuits, that somehow there is an impropriety uh, created I'm here to remind you that the school board and the board of supervisors are two entirely separate bodies with different areas of responsibilities. The board of supervisors does land use, not you guys. Now there's a list of cases, open cases, floating around in part of your package. Anybody know how many open cases there are against governing bodies in Virginia? Would the number 10,000 surprise you? Anybody bother to look at the substance of these lawsuits? Does the word school appear on, in any of these lawsuits? No, it doesn't. There are lawsuits about drain fields, five of them, the exact same lawsuit that have sat there now for over 10 years because the board changed their policies. There are appeals from the BZA about cemeteries about used car dealers. There's the revocation of a special use permit uh, for a car dealer. There are cases about Stafford's cluster ordinance. The cluster ordinance permits development on smaller lots, the same acreage, the same density, as if you built by right on big lots. None of these cases have anything to do with school policy, with school proffers, with school sites. And if you had bothered to look at them, you would know that. But you didn't. You just listed them. Now, I'm going to add something, something else you may not know. 
It has been uh, 1996 was the last time the Stafford County saw a residential rezoning exceeding 200 units. There has been a retirement community, a very big one zone. There's been a mixed use community, but everything else is infill. Embry Mill goes back to 1992. Westlake is 1989, August is 1992. You don't have new, big new residential zonings in Stafford County, the board doesn't permit it. So it's build out is what we're in. Two years ago, the Stafford board had to drop its cash proper guidelines because of legislation from the General Assembly. We don't do that anymore. It's on a case by case basis. Now, Ms. Brown mentioned to you something about libel and slander. I'm a businessman and Lemon and Healy is a business. In a court of law, we don't have to prove damages. It's assumed that when you say something about a business in Stafford County, that it is actionable and you're liable. So get back to your jobs and leave me and my firm and Ms. Healy out of it. Thank you. Could you sign in please, Mr. Lemming? Mr. Lemming, could you please sign in? All right, is there anyone else who would like to address the board? Seeing none, we will close the citizen comment portion, come to the board for student discipline committee report. Do we have any student discipline to report? It looks like no. there's one. Uh, yes, if you could, Ms. Hazard. I mean, I just have it up. Um, on August 23rd, 2018, a committee of the board met to consider one student disciplinary matter. The committee expelled student A and authorized the student to attend the Regional Alternative Education Program. Thank you, Ms. Hazard. Um, that brings us to school board committee reports. Do we have any committee reports, Ms. Egan? We unfortunately had to cancel the governance um, committee meeting. There, we just weren't prepared for it, so it didn't make any sense to actually hold it. But we are going to regroup and we're going to get some of the information from Dr. Kisner. Thank you. Dr. Chase. Yes. Um, the CGS Governing Board met last Thursday. This was the first meeting with the new director of CGS, Jennifer Grigsby. Uh, Dr. Donna Polin, who oversees Governor's Schools and Gifted Education for the Virginia Department of Education, gave us a presentation on the roles and responsibilities of the Regional Governing Board and Fiscal Agent. I think we will be reworking some aspects of our bylaws in response to her presentation. In addition, we discussed the way in which the annual culminating research project is graded. Three of the four participating counties give students credit for their research projects. Stafford County is the only one that doesn't. So I will be bringing a proposal to the board at a meeting in our future to discuss this. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Ms. Young? Um, no, we didn't have any CT or technology meetings because I think uh, they were canceled because of the weather. Ms. Hazard. Um, I'll, I'll discuss it when we get to the legislative okay. priority. Um, let's go to our telephonic participants. Ms. Decatur. <laughs> Ms. Decatur? Oh, come here. So, take a minute. Oh, she's got a lot, a little lag. Uh, sorry, I was responding, but I was on mute. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked if there were, you have any committee reports for us this evening. Okay, no ma'am, thank you. All right. Mr. McGosker, do you have any committee reports? No, just uh, information that the Joint uh, Working Schools Committee, we also postponed uh, our, our meeting that was supposed to happen on the 24th uh, of this month, and we are going to reschedule for a later date due to lack of agenda items for uh, right now. Okay, thank you, Mr. McOsker. All right, that brings us to board member comments. Um, Ms. Hazard, would you like to start? Uh, I can. Um, first, I would like to just say um, I appreciate everybody's uh, indulgence during the last couple weeks. We've certainly had um, everything from rain to traffic to anything else you can sort of think of. So. Um, I really want to say a huge shout out to our um, staff for I know that that requires additional um, support with our buses and getting our students home safely. So to our bus drivers and those who have to stay, um, truly appreciate um, 
what you have to do because I know how much you love our kids and you want them home safely. Um, a constituent has come to me with um, some information and some uh, desire that we um, actually will be asking for a meeting with Dr. Kisner about bus safety, but not in the traditional sense of what we think of bus safety. Um, there are no national standards about buses when you drop off students, of how old they can be left with, who they can be left with. There is really, there's no national um, even looking into this, and I think that's something we want to make sure of, especially in light of days like I would say today, if um, 95, as many of us know, some s parents who normally would be home by potentially a 3, 3.30 time frame, <laughs> I'm sure missed it by hours today of what are we going to do in those situations? So that's something I think we as a division and maybe even the Commonwealth need to just sort of figure out what we need to do in that sense of what is our standard protocol in that in that way. I know our, our um, current staff want our students safe but I think that's something we need to think about, especially in our um, traffic <laughs> jammed um, uh, society of Stafford County. Um, one other thing, um, or two other things, I have enjoyed uh, working and getting to know Dr. Kisner for us. Also, we've been meeting him as you have. Uh, I have a special now affinity for him, knowing we like the same music and ended up at the same concert, but didn't know we were both there. So we've. Um, I won't go into who we like. Van Morrison. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, so that was actually fun. And then I think one other thing that um, we as a board last year took care of, um, our calendar says that there is a student teacher holiday on Veterans Day. And I think that's something that we as a board believe that that should occur with all employees. And I believe last year we did look into saying, when we meant all our employees, this is an area that's very military connected, that we meant all employees, and I, I'm not sure if that includes our 12 month, I believe. Mr. McCosker, I believe you last year or two years ago, it was also your custodian and stuff. If we don't have our students and our teachers in the building, I believe that that should also be um, a holiday for those. So I hope that's something. I, that I think that's something Dr. Kisner is going to oh, address. Yeah, okay, yeah. excellent. I, then I have jumped right, down on that. So, but anyway, uh, just wanted to make sure that I do believe that that is something we as such a military connected community, many of us have um, Veterans Day things that we attend or do and I would not want our 12 months um, employees in the building when we don't have students or, 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 or our teaching staff. So, but other than that, press on everybody. Maybe there will be less rain and we won't need to get oars for our school buses. Thank you. Um, Ms. Decatur. Hi. <laughs> um, so I, I wasn't going to have any comments this evening, but I, I'm concerned about my signal um, and my battery power on my phone because I've now been on it since 5. And so I just want to say a couple things real quick in case I lose you guys when it comes down to our action items this evening. Um, and the first thing I want to say is, Chris, you and I had a great conversation today, and I know what. Uh-oh. Mr. Cater? Jamie, you died. <laughs> yeah. I guess she doesn't have a... It's nothing personal. And I just want to tell um, a quick story. As you guys know, my background is in uh, private day schools. I have been accused, uh, and, and my mother owns the private day schools, which is something that maybe some of you don't know. Um, I have been accused since I've been on the board of potentially having a pool in something that my mother has a financial interest in. And so what I want to explain is that I think we're mistaking, and, and I'm so glad that you have support there for you tonight, Chris, because like I said, if I was in your position, it, it hurts my feelings um, that we're even discussing this, um, and I certainly would not want to be in your position. Um, but but I, I do want to make sure that we're talking about the same thing, because a conflict of interest is very different than an appearance of a conflict of interest. And I just want to say that if I was ever in a position where anyone questioned whether or not there was anything um, suspicious, fishy, any type of anything regarding my mother owning a private day school and any decisions that I had an opportunity to make on the school board, I would gladly um, cast the gavel, recuse myself, whatever. But, but the point I want to make is that the 
seven of us are a team. And we're a team who together answer to the residents of Stafford County. And all I want to do is make sure that as a team, we have no appearance of any proprietorship at all whatsoever. And no matter what we need to do together to make that decision together to make sure that we are squeaky clean to our constituents. And I'm not saying that we are not. I'm saying that if anyone ever questions anything. So I just wanted to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. It's not that I believe that there is a conflict of interest. It's that if anyone ever brings anything to my attention, I want to make sure that I'm responding to them and that I'm responding appropriately to make sure that there's no question in anybody's mind at any time for any of us. So I wanted to make sure, I'm sorry to take my board member's comments for this topic, but um, I, I wanted to make sure in case I lose anybody that it's said uh, and that everyone knows where I stand. Um, but, you know, I, I just want to make it very clear that we are a team and we have an obligation to the county of Stafford. Um, and, and I know that we can come up with a reasonable solution to what some may think appears as a problem and what others don't see as a problem at all. To each their own. But, but let's as a team come up with something that will be solution oriented. And, and that's all I'm going to say for my member comments. Thank you, Ms. Decatur. Ms. Egan. All right. Uh, I'm just going to say to Christian Peabody, thank you for your presentation. Um, and you're right. We do need we do need to move the scale. Um, we've been at the median too long, and I think we had that conversation at the uh, uh, one of our budget discussions that it's really time. So I'm hoping that the board will get work together to work on sliding that scale up to the upper quartile. So mm -hmm. thanks um, to the countywide PTO and PTA leaders that came here last Tuesday, uh, the 18th, for our little annual roundtable. Thank you for coming. Um, I hope that we can incorporate any of your um, budget priorities into what Ms. Uh, Dr. Chase has uh, uh, prepared. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Egan. Dr. Chase. I, I don't have any comments tonight. Thank you. Mr. McOsker, do you have any comments this evening? No comments. No comments. All right. Ms. Young. Okay. <laughs> I'm scared of you all. No comments. I have lots of comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my time. I'm glad I don't have that three-minute buzzer over there. Um, so but I wrote it down so I could remember. Um, I had my one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Kisner, and I discussed several number of topics that are important to me, transparency and accountability. I asked for a process to audit expenses of each school. After we received Dr. Kisner's uh, report, we can discuss a follow-up action plan. I'm also requesting Dr. Kisner to give the board a status of the concept of using a consultant for the redistricting plan, including the award of the contract. To keep our community involved and engaged, it is critical to me that the community be kept fully apprised in the countywide elementary redistricting. Looking forward to move forward on the consulting contract on redistricting. Um, I visited HH Pool last week. This is before your rule. <laughs> and great things is going on at HH Pool. Mr. Bingham, lovely wife, if you're looking at uh, me, but I knew Mr. Bingham when my oldest son was in HH Pool, and he, he is aging gracefully, I tell you. He looks good. Uh, no offense, Mrs. Bingham. But Mr. Bingham <laughs> secured a two-year grant and uh, teamed up with Anchor for Life, which is the liaison, uh, liaison with Penny Raleigh to implement the Anchor for Life Pilots Navy program. Um, and it, it's... I think it partnered with Trevor Remain Company. I'm not sure if that's the name of it, but originally it was to meet the initial needs of the military students who, char uh, who change schools regularly as their parents change commands and bases, but will continue to provide ongoing support. The PRIDE program at HH Pool is a pilot program that is not limited to only helping military students at this time. PRIDE, which stands for Perseverance, Respect, Integrity, Determination, Excellence, and Empowerment, and transition to help kids over difficult situations. The program combines training for leadership within the classroom with students selected by their teachers for their communication abilities and demonstrated leadership. The program focuses on character development and anti-bullying. Thank you, Principal Bingham, young as ever, your staff, and your new guidance counselor that you stole from North Stafford High School. 
<laughs> um, last week, school board member Holly Hazard and I, we attended the Virginia School Board Association Legislative Advocacy Conference in Charlottesville on September the 20th, 2018. Met with several delegates, I'm not gonna name them. Um, Terry Gil Gore was there and uh, John Edwards and um, a few more. Um, we talked about equity in rural schools, we talked about broadband access and uh, learning and uh, school safety. I've stated before about school safety in my previous comments, and I'm stating it again today, that we cannot just stack SROs and SSOs in the schools. Some schools in Virginia are already having teachers pack heavy, uh, you know, like guns in their lunch boxes. I am totally against that because of implicit bias. This issue is already raising eyebrows in Fairfax, our, nor our northern um, neighbors, whom is overhauling that school ro uh, resource officers program because of illicit bias. And re-looking at the program that they have implemented because the data is showing that officers was disproportionately disciplining African Americans and Latinos for that reason we should, before implementing ours, that we especially be careful that we ensure our SROs are trained in sensitivity classes and not biased against certain groups of people. We need to look at our mental state of our students and ensure that the ratio of guidance counselors against students is reasonable. At this time, it is not. We need to increase students' access to mental health professionals should be a top priority. Our division should plan to broaden students' assistance program from substance abuse to mental health. The goal should be to provide more support for social, emotional, and mental health needs, improvements to student wellness, attendance, and behavior should be the expected outcomes. I also attended, almost done, I, almost atten I also attended a program at Bethlehem Primitive Baptist Church. Um, don't dwell on that word, primitive. It is a black historic church that had a historic dedication event unveiling roadside markers for the church and a cemetery. I was joined there by Chairwoman Board of Supervisors Meg Bomke and board member Tom Cohen. I met Rosie Mae White, whom in 1962 became the first African-American student to enter Stafford High School. And I just wanted to read a little piece here of my brochure. Rosie Mae White, a Bethlehem member, um, became the first American student to enter uh, the, the high school. Sherman White drove the school bus that carried the junior and senior classes from H.H. Poole to Stafford High School. Rosie May graduated in June 1963. She went to work at Mary Washington and uh, at, at uh, Washington Hospital as a nurse and retired 47 years later. Um, PTO PTA meeting last week was great. Uh, individuals brought up issues such as pay for teachers and safety in schools. Thank you for coming. I enjoy meeting all of you. Some of you asked me to come to your meetings. I'm not sure why. Uh, probably because I'm a little loud. And maybe I'll, you know, just bring about more people, more money. Uh, but just call me and um, send me an invite. As long as I'm open, I'll, I'll be happy to um, show up. Um, and that's all I have. wasn't too bad, was it? No three, no three minute rule. Thank you, Ms. Young. Um, I, I'd also like to thank the PTO, PTA, PTSA uh, leadership who came to our meeting last week. It's always a pleasure to hear from them uh, and we very much appreciate what they do for our schools. They really make a difference for our teachers in the classrooms. There's a lot of time and effort um, and resources that, that are put into that organization and uh, a lot of times it is by a fairly limited a number of people and we all know who they are and, and, and thank them for everything they do. Um, I'd also like to thank those who came to speak this evening um, on my behalf and I'd like to recognize my daughter who has never been to a school board meeting. Um, you've all heard me talk about her. Uh, she's here for a few months. She popped in from her job in DC so She's sitting with her father there, so well, thank, happened, thank you. <laughs> yes, there, there, there is a Sarah Lemming, and uh, <laughs> she's here this evening. Sarah spoke Dutch to her. She didn't oh, that's that. right. She's, she's learning to speak Dutch, so Mrs. Uh, no, not me. Young can uh, Sarah speak is. <laughs> to her. Okay, all right, well, en enough of that. Well, thank, thank you uh, 
Thank you for coming. That brings us to the superintendent's comments. Okay, Dr. Well, Kisner. <clears throat> so I just wanna let you know I'm still on my listening, learning, and doing too. I'm not just learning and listening, <laughs> I'm doing also. So I've, so far I've had opportunity to visit 23 schools, the early childhood program, and the alternative program, which I'm hoping that will come back to you in a few months uh, with a name. I, it deserves a name, okay? But I've been remarkable, I was remarkably impressed what I saw there, I just, just to let you know. So I thank you for doing that as a board. Not every community does that. Um, I've also had this opportunity to meet with five school board members, one on one as mentioned, and four board of supervisor members, and in the next week or so we'll complete the three. And then I w I'm also in the process of scheduling with different stakeholders throughout the community, and I'm gonna ask you on Friday in my, um, my letter to you, to each, of you uh, each one of you to maybe in to um, recommend two other people that you think um, I should reach out to so I could get a good sense of um, the pride of Stafford, okay? Um, as already mentioned, I would like the school board, um, Holly already gave the background, so Sorry. I don't really get in details, to um, offer, uh, amend the calendar so all 12 month employees could be off on Veterans Day. So I don't know if that requires an action or just a blessing or. Does anyone have any objection to that? No? Okay. Well, I, I don't think we, I think Dr. Kisner can do that with our okay. consent. All right, thank you. Um, if you determine you needed to bring the action, then we'll just put it on the uh, okay. consent agenda for the next meeting. Um, in, uh, I like, well, I liked all the comments, but there was one comment about uh, board members visiting all the elementary schools. I think that's a great idea. So I'll throw it out there um, uh, with some dates, and uh, many dates, and hopefully you'll get a chance to do that. November is also um, bring your legislators mm -hmm. to visit schools. So we will organize that, and again, keep everybody informed, and, um, and hopefully you'll join us in that. Is on a yellow bus? Well, we're going to do a yellow bus too. I forget the date. October, October twenty seventh. November. 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 Wow. November twenty seventh. But we'll do plenty of time to talk about the yellow bus. But we're doing yellow bus also. So as already, there's you know I'm learning in Stafford. You think you know how to get to a place, and then you go the next day. The road is closed, or there's a tree or water. But um, <laughs> and to avoid ninety five if you can. So. Um, <laughs> So we are trying to communicate to parents. Um, we've already started the process. There are several road closures affecting our area, including Parkway Boulevard in, in Stafford. It's already been closed to Friday. Next week, Pope Poplar Road? Poplar. Poplar Road in Stafford County will experience several, several cl closures as well. So we're, we're working with transportation. We're, we're doing robocalls. We're cleaning out Peach Jar. We're trying to communicate to parents as as much as possible and often as possible, the ways we're, we're rerouting. Um, but as today, you might be aware, you know, there was um, some accidents on 95, so buses are doing their best job to make sure they get the kids home safe and timely, but unfortunately, circumstances may prevent them to get there as fast as we would like. So, all right, that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kisner. Do we have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? Motion to approve consent. Second. We have motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to action items. 10.01, approve the proposed revisions to the school board's finance and budget committee bylaws. Dr. Chase. I, know, I think we've, we've all had an opportunity to look at them. They're, they're fairly minor changes. Do you, um, do you have a motion for us? Move that we approve the proposed revisions to the school board's finance and budget committee bylaws. Second. Second. Well, no. I think Ms. Young was first. <laughs> you need to be present. Second, second, second. You need to be present. <laughs> it's that little delay. <laughs> you, we'll, get, we'll get you when you come back, Mr. McOsker. All right, we have a motion and a second for approval of the proposed revisions to the school board's finance and budget committee bylaws. Is there any discussion? No, I'd like to thank you, um, Dr. Chase, and your committee for, for your work on this. I think it's, it's, it's important to have updated bylaws. And Yes, and you were part of the committee. Ms. Young. And Ms. Decatur. And Ms. Decatur, thank you as well. You're running the show. All right. 
So um, all in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Do, do, will you hear Mr. McCosker? No, oh. that was the gator. Okay. Uh, I'm sure he was an I. He was a second. Yeah, second, yeah second. I'm an I. You're an I. Okay, <laughs> good. I, I All right, that motion passed unanimously. We have to get used to this little stereo uh, yes. uh, phones it was with the little lag. It's, it's, it's interesting. By the end of the meeting, we'll probably uh, have it down. All right, that brings us to the revised 10.02. Approve the annual elementary school program capacity model in support of the FY20, FY29 capital improvement plan and 2019 student accommodation plan. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve the annual elementary school program capacity model. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Dr. Chase, second by Ms. Young. Is there any discussion? I, I give the motion makers the. Sure. I would just like to say that um, this proposed change uh, actually means that our staffing standards actually match uh, our building usage, and I think that's very important. Um, and I, I do want to say that I, I did hear constituents talking about concerns about class size. Um, it's hard up here to balance. Um, you know, on the one hand, one group wants a 5% raise. On the other hand, people want us to hire, uh, you know, 20 more teachers. Um, unfortunately, we don't have money for everything. And so um, we have some hard decisions to make here. I believe that we're doing the best for the students of Stafford County. Um, we, we have a certain amount of money that we need to put across all the things that we that come before us our students are a primary gift and importance so we're just going to make sure that we we have uh, classes we have teachers um, for those classes instead of having um, more teachers and we don't have students versus having students with no teachers we we need to balance that so I think we're making the right decision here thank you Ms. Young Ms. Hazard Obviously, everybody's waiting for my comment because I will not be supporting the motion, as I um, have said. I believe that um, several years ago, we brought forth a recommendation to reduce class size. Um, we also, at that same time, over those two years, put forth staffing standards that um, really seem to align, in my opinion, with um, it appeared best practices, or, or at least that's how it was presented to us at the time. Um, at that time, the staff recommended that kindergarten be at, we, we wanted 22, we wanted it less than, than first grade. One to three would be 24, and fourth and fifth would be 25. Additional teachers were hired to meet these targets, which I think was a good thing um, at that time. Um, I do find it astonishing that we want to change that because last year when we looked at our um, class size model or, or the data that we received, it said that our K to three average was about 22 kids and fourth and fifth was 24 kids. To me, it seems that this current model is working um, and I do not want there to be any perception that we would increase. Um, my, my fear um, is that this is not best practices. I do have to defer to certainly um, our instructional staff and our, um, and our planning staff. But I have to say that what this feels to me tonight is that then we are negating the school board's goals. We are raising the capacity by two students in, um, well, in kindergarten from what we hoped um, up two students, up four students actually. No, up two students, excuse me. And um, my fear is that the reason I cannot vote for this, we have, we have talked about program capacity and design capacity. The design capacity of our buildings is 24 students, K to three, and for fourth and fifth, it's 25. I see no reason why we should go above what design capacity is. 
Also, our SOQ funding from the state is 24 and 25. And our teaching ratios, how the money we receive is a blended model of 24. The 24 we are talking about here is, as it says in our staffing standards, an average. That doesn't mean every day that is exactly how many kids are in the classroom. I am not math, most of you know that, but when our average can move up to 26 and 27, to me that means there can be somebody at 28 and 29. And that was, not, that was something that I felt that the board fought hard to make sure we were moving from. So I will not be supporting the motion um, for those reasons. I think that we have the original staffing standards, believe it or not, as originally applied, I know we wanted to go lower and perhaps we did not, but that the 22, 24, and 25 meant, uh, made a lot of sense to me because it also aligned with what the Virginia capacity and funding mechanisms were. Thank you, Ms. Hazard. Ms. Decatur? I, I, I really appreciate uh, doing, doing this over the phone. I can't see anybody. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Thank you. Ms. Egan. I'm not going to repeat what I said at the work session, so I'm just going to say ditto to what um, Jamie and Holly have said. Um, that's it. Thanks. Mr. McOsker. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I will be supporting this. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of confusion about this issue, and the issue here is uh, capacity for building in the future. We're, we're trying to send a message to the Board of Supervisors, and, and, and to us, of course, about when do we need new schools. That's what this data drill is about. It is not about class capacity. It is not about, uh, not capacity, it's not about class size reduction. We keep, we keep using that class size reduction. Class size reduction and the staffing standards is exactly what we did two and a half years ago when we reduced elementary school class sizes, and it costs money, and that's fine. And, you know, I have always been uh, uh, beating the drum on two things. Employee uh, pay, which we did okay with last year. Not great, but we did okay with what we had. And class size reduction, because those are the two important things to our constituents. But the picture that this heretofore 18 and 19 uh, design chiclet chart 
painted was that we needed new schools earlier and in, and in places that we may not need new schools. And, you know, if you go back and look at the data, some, some of these schools that were painted in red, you know, were de-staffed teachers this year, and they, went, they were actually reduced in students. So we didn't need things that we were beating our drums about saying that we needed. We were wrong. So I'm, I am glad that the staff came back and, and took a good hard look at it. And, we can, and we're going to take a good hard look at, at these numbers at our, at our staffing standards every year, I hope, and, and put money against those. But the capacity for where we need new schools, and I'll talk a little bit more about Ferry Farm. Oh, yeah, I will. You, you can bet that. Um, uh, but capacity for new schools with, the, with this metrics and staffing standards is two different things. And so, um, you know, that's my two cents. Bye. Okay, thank you, Mr. McOsker. Um, I'm going to be supporting this because it aligns the program capacity with the staffing standards that are in place and that we actually hire teachers for our classrooms at this time. That doesn't mean that this is going to be in place forever. I think um, Ms. Egan raised a, a good point at the work session. You know, we need to be reviewing those staffing standards. And we will be reviewing those staffing standards, not just the elementary school classroom standards, but all our classroom standards, as well as the support positions, such as the diagnosticians and others that we have, as a board said, we want to have as a standard in our school. Uh, in a perfect world, we'd have plenty of money and plenty of room, and we could hire, you know, all the teachers that we wanted. But as Dr. Chase pointed out, if there's, um, you know, teachers not available to teach the students, it, it's, there's no point to, to talking about uh, smaller class. I didn't mean to paraphrase you, but um, I, I think it was a good point. Uh, we said when we first dealt with program capacity that we would review it annually. I think we need to do that. And I would, you know, ask Dr. Kisner to tell us when would be the best time in the year for this to come back to us. You know, I don't know if it's the beginning of the year, the end of the year, the middle of the year, whatever, but I would ask that you let us know because this is not the last time we will be discussing this. We have to look at it. Um, you know, we're talking about the redistricting. When we have the redistricting, that could change the class size reduction schools. Well, maybe not for next year because they do it two years in a row, but that's all based on certain percentages of, uh, of students at that populations at the schools. So we, we need to look at this every year, uh, but I, I appreciate staff coming forward and, and making a recommendation, and I think this aligns us with our, our staffing standards, which we hire for, and does not give an unreasonable expectation to the community. Now that doesn't mean we won't have some smaller classes. These are the these are the the capacity which would be the maximum that we would be looking at. We're not um, suggesting that every class will be filled to the maximum at every time. That's that's just not mathematically possible, um, given the fact that we don't pick um, you know when our students come in or what grade level they're at or um, you know perhaps even what school they're at. So. Um, I, I know there's been a lot of effort put into this. I'm, I'm seeing um, Matt here. He's been working on this for months, maybe years, um, and, and, and will be in the next coming years. <laughs> well, um, Mr. Horan, and, and instruction as well. So thank you for all the work that you've done. I think you've heard from the board. There's still questions. And, um, this is something that will, will not be ended after the vote this evening. So um, if there's no more discussion, we'll call for the question. All in favor of the motion to approve the um, element, annual elementary school program capacity model as stated in 10.02, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. 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 Madam Clerk, would you poll the board, please? Dr. Chase? Aye. Mr. Kaver? No. Ms. Egan? No. Ms. Hazard? No. Ms. Reed? Yes. Mr. McCosker? Yes. Ms. Young? Yes. Brings us to 10.03, approve the FY20, FY29 capital improvement plan, large projects and infrastructure priorities. Do we have a motion? Do 
Chiang. <laughs> Motion to approve the proposed uh, revisions to the Joint Capital Improvement Program policy. Yep. Oh, 10.03. Oh, you, oh, did, you, you know what? You need to refresh. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay, well, somebody else. Ms. Hazard, uh, rearrange for you us. It. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, it's the um, annual, no, the FY20, FY29 Capital Improvement Plan, Usually large projects and infrastructure priorities. That little sticky and tells us to refresh. So do we have a motion to approve? No motion? Hmm. Well, is there a motion to defer this or just, it's gotta, it's gotta, gotta, be, a, it's gotta be addressed at some point, I, I move either that we as it is or with um, amendments. It doesn't have to be this I evening. Move, I move that we defer. It's 10.03. Okay. All right. I have All right. Second. All right, motion and second to defer this. Do we have a date certain or do we just wanna defer it, um, table it? Madam Chair, this is uh, Mr. Rabasser. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, Madam Chair. No, I, I think um, what we need to do is we need to sit back down as a, as a board and just kind of focus on this topic for about 60 minutes. Um, that, that's my suggestion. Um, don't try to cram it in with five other things. Just I, I know we have meetings three times a week, but it's we just, this is very important, I think, and I just think we need to sit down and kind of focus on this, and that's just my two cents. All right. Then we should do 10 or 3 and 10 or 4 to get that, because the board's here again. Well, well, we'll get to that one then. Did you have something to say, Ms. Hazard? Um, my only comment would be is, um, as I have stated up here several times, and this bleeds a little bit into the second one, so I'm not trying to merge both, mm -hmm. but I think they are connected. It appears that we've been requested to provide these projects in September. Most of us who are part of a school district know that September is spent finding out who arrived this summer and who came and who, um, and who made it to school. For us to be able to, for us to be able to say, these are our needs as of today, I think is very difficult because, come November, I forget fifteenth, first, whatever the date is, when we get new enrollment figures, I also, as I have stated, believe that the process, and I'm sorry, this is bleeding into um, the second one, is it doesn't respect. If it's a joint process, it needs to be a joint process, not a joint product. Just, oh, we all agreed on a product. The process has to be joint, and there has to be a respect to the school board and to the school system that we want to give you the, give the best information, not only to the Board of Supervisors, but to ourselves and to our constituents of who arrived, what changed from last year, because we voted on the CIP projects, I don't know how many times last year, three times. The last vote was May 23rd. I have no new documented information that changed since May 23rd to today for me to say, wow, let's do this. Let's change these dates. I don't know, and I'm not going to know in the next two weeks either, that I think that is a flaw in the policy but I think it has major questions for us because if we send projects over, as Dr. Chase said in the, in the meeting, and if I paraphrase incorrectly, let me know, I'm going to say it this way. It says, send them over, and then when you get send over your enrollments in November, the technical review committee can overrule you. This is the, this is the board, this is the school board's job, is to figure out what the priorities are um, based on our best information, not a technical review committee in November, and I will continue to say that that is the wrong way for us to go. Okay. So, so I don't so know what date to give you, except it, we can have the discussion, but it sounds like we have a lot of modeling to do. I, I don't know. Ms. Young? I was just saying, should we then um, defer both 1003 and 1004 and um, have discussions on both of them? I think we should discuss 1004 separately tonight just to get our concepts together and then 
do we are we ready to discuss that? Do we, well, let's let's take care of ten oh three and then we'll move to ten oh four and okay. you can make a motion on that one. Mm -hmm. How we how about we do that? Any other discussion on this item? Well, the motion is to defer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And are is that uh, the proper motion? If we want to just put we want to postpone this. I think that's what we want. Okay, then that's the perfect motion, right? You know, we will, this will come back because it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. But Ms. Egan, did you have anything to say? No. Ms. Decatur? Oh. Mr. Mr. McOsker, are you still with us? Yeah, yeah of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get rid of you, can we? <laughs> I, the, only, the only thing, I just got a headache. Who was talking before you? Is that Daryl Nelson? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was our uh, that was our legal advisor. Okay, no, uh, I, I've got let's you know let's defer it and then talk about it when we we're all on we're all on point. Okay, I, I, and I I certainly will support that motion to defer it. I would encourage this board to have this discussion. I, I know our time is limited, and, and I agree with Ms. McOsker, we need to devote an hour to this. We need to, to, to have this discussion and make this decision so that we can send our priorities and our plans to the Board of Supervisors. If they don't receive it from us, then they will be making you know, their independent assessment and decisions that we may or may not be in agreement with. So I'd, I'd say if we can ask, um, uh, Ms. Hall to see if, if we can set aside, you know, a time. Uh, I don't, you know, these, these nights are all filling up or we can, we can say that we'll set a, an hour before the next, um, the next meeting, you know, one or the other. It doesn't have to come back on the agenda for the next meeting, but I would say within the next, uh, within the next month, it would be in the board's best interest to, you know, to come to a, a plan on this and, and make a decision. Ms. Hazard. And Ms. Healy, there are actually, it appears, two attachments to this that also include the three R projects as well. And I would just like to state in, after our visit with our PTOs, one of the topics that came up regarding infrastructure was playgrounds um, and the adequacy of those. And I know that they are listed here, but I think we heard from more than one elementary school. Um, I look at Anthony Burns and it says, repair play area and it's projected in 2029. Well, Anthony Burns opened in 2006, so we're talking 23 years potentially. Now there may have been upgrades, but I'm just saying that was something I felt like we heard loud and clear from our, um, from our PTO presidents that they are now trying to raise those funds. I would just like to say, could we think about on this three R list, potentially looking at the, um, uh, playground assessments to maybe be either moved up or at least be able to report back to our PTOs. Mm -hmm. Here's really where they are, and I know you have Anthony Burns. I, I would know. hate to me say. Meanwhile, meanwhile, would we be able to at least make sure that they're safe while we're waiting for the assessment? Oh, that, yes, Mr. Horan's office is uh, in charge of that, I believe. And Dr. Uh, Kennedy. Oh, okay. And I'm sure they'll follow, but it just seems like an awful long time for more yeah. than 20 years All right, so and I know Ms. Healy you have well you know some experience close in this. my heart I know so back when I started on the board it was about fifty thousand dollars and now I found out from the PTOs it's a hundred thousand dollars so inflation has hit playgrounds as well as everything else um, over the years all right well let's let's try to set up a you know an hour at, at the minimum Miss Hall and if you know if we could set a separate night we could we could do this and if we decide to um, add 1004 to it we can unfortunately we didn't have enough time is that is that uh, all right with the board if we look for a separate night uh, the problem is when we we have these work sessions and we're very ambitious about setting up the agenda and we put all these things on and then we need more time than you know than is is available and we don't want to cut short the discussions because you know they're they're all important is there going to be is food that, is there going to be food that depends on what time we start <laughs> hey where's that um does everybody have brought to us know? some candy does, uh, does everybody have to know what i'm doing here <laughs> <laughs> it's halloween is coming <laughs> all right is that is that agreeable to have miss hall try to find a night okay and you might want to set that for an hour and a half because 
I have a feeling we're not going to finish in an hour. Um, yes. Yeah, so now we'll we'll take the uh, motion. the motion to defer to uh, date uncertain. All in favor, please say aye. And the three R projects. Aye. Well, we we Thank have to do for 10.03, and then we'll get to 10. We'll oh. do 10.04 next. I thought they were attached to three R. Oh. So. Oh, okay. Yes, the whole the whole agenda item. Okay, I just wanted to yes. be clear. Ten point oh three, and motion to defer. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. All right. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Ten point oh four. Approve the proposed revisions to the joint capital improvement program policy. Ms. Young, did you have a motion? On that? I, I, I was just saying the same thing that I think we need to defer this also and take some more time unless somebody wants to approve this right now. I just think they go hand in hand looking at the, the well maybe we should talk about it because I have some issues sure. with it um, do you do do we have to have a motion we to should have we it? should have a motion before we um, have a discussion all right so motion to approve for discussion purposes okay um, do we have a second second all right thank so you we have motion second Ms. Egan <laughs> so the revisions to this um, there are a couple things that kind of jumped out at me um, uh, the removal of the capacity prioritization was decided on by three members and the, the change was apparently made and it's put into this. Um, I didn't vote for that. Um, it's not consistent with the county comprehensive plan. Um, it doesn't say that we are, you know, we're going to prioritize projects based on what the county needs, what our standards of, um, our, our level of services is what the, what the county refers to it as. And I just, I have an issue with that, and I'm, I don't know if the Board of Supervisors have adopted this yet, but I find it hard to believe that they would vote on something that goes against the premise of their comp plan. So that was, that was one of the issues. <laughs> and then there was another issue I had in here um, that in a, somebody made an addition to the appendix that um, basically established that our high school capacity was going to be set at 2150. I don't remember voting on that for, for our high schools going forward. We talked about having educational standards, um, uh, kind of like what we did with Moncure to establish, you know, what do we want out of, our, out of our buildings? What programs do they have to support? That type of thing. And we haven't had any of those conversations yet, so I'm, I don't know how they came up with the 2150 and added it to this document during a joint <laughs> committee meeting that hadn't been approved by our full board yet. Do you know what I'm saying? So where did the 2150 come from? I, I thought that came from the previous joint board, and I may be wrong about that. So I it appeared, and I just, I, there Scott, had been discussion. Do you, you want to talk to ask yeah. Scott yeah. about yeah. some details? Oh. oh, Dr. Kisner, can we pull Scott forward to answer some of these questions? He's right here. <laughs> not, not He's dealing with a little family issue. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, What's the question? Um, we wanted to ask Scott to come forward, and I was asking. Scott, come forward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes, you're correct, Dr. Chase. Uh, it was included in last year's uh, documents, and it was a carryover from last year. It was during the discussions we were trying to solidify, and it, it follows staff's uh, recommendation and what we've been practicing, that 2150 is the um, vision we have for new high schools, the size of the new high schools. And so it was documented in last year's process and it was a rollover and to this year. Was that done in the um, technical review committee or was that done with the three members of the Board of Supervisors and the three members of the I think the it was done uh, with uh, discussion with the three on three, you know, the three, so the OSC, the Oversight Committee. Okay. I well, I wasn't was part of that. That was that was the two fabs. But it follows it follows suit with what staff has for year several years now practice that, and we've projected that in the student accommodation report, as well as uh, some of our CIP documents that our high school target is twenty one fifty. Are you all comfortable with that, or is this something that we need to talk about when we have the conversation about the educa educational specifications? Because okay. I'm not comfortable with it. We, how do we know that our core services are going to support? I just think we have to have a conversation with it before we commit ourselves to a number of students in a high school. Deferment. I have, what do you think? I have a, don't go anywhere. 
if, if I have a question, but sure. Um, um, Mr. Heron, who pays for the three R projects? Um, currently, um, the process is that we have um, not been able to budget significantly for three R projects in the school board's budget. So for the last two to three years, our practice has been that um, infrastructure requirements are funded with operational savings from that particular fiscal year that we're in. So last year, we were able to fund um, a large amount of projects with FY18 operational savings. It was also supplemented by FY17 carry forward funds that were um, the board requested consideration for some funding of some projects to the Board of Supervisors. So those were the two um, areas that we funded the majority of our infrastructure projects. We hope to continue to attack it in the budget process. Staff plans to bring forward to the board, I believe, some requirements to slowly increase the amount of dollars that are uh, identified in the budget for infrastructure projects. Does that uh, answer your question, ma'am? Um, yes, my, my comment then on that when I look at this process is now it appears the TRC can, like on the other thing, override the school board prioritization of the 3R projects. And at this point, I'm not sure I'm entirely ready to make that leap. I'm not, I, I, yes, it appears we're gonna have more discussion, but if you and Dr. Kisner want some of my, where I may have some heartburn, um, again, it goes to what I keep saying. I feel like this joint process in every way, shape and form erodes the, wor the, the um, role of the school board. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair? Yes. Okay, so so I, I heard what, what the board member said, and um, so the, the original Appendix A, um, you know, we discussed the 2150, and that was in Oversight Committee. That's correct. Mr. Haran was correct. Um, and we decided what, the, what, you know, we should come up with the right number. And um, 2150 was what was agreed by our staff and our superintendent at the time. Um, and that, that was the correct, it wasn't 2250, it wasn't 2050, and so that's how that number stayed in there. Um, if we want another look at it, uh, to, to do some data on that, that's fine. So the original, not, not the three current members, now the, the, the three previous members, I think it was Ms. Egan and a few others, uh, put in Appendix A, um, so, so projects uh, approved in the previous CIP uh, will not be looked at by the technical review committee, but the oversight committee, the three board members, okay, uh, can recommend that projects, even when, if the dirt's turning and shovels are already done, that they can be stopped at any time due to the needs of the community, which, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so here we have a process that we all agreed on that was eight pages of metrics from this review committee, and then an appendix to this process says that, hey, listen, I don't care what you guys have said, but oh, by the way, we can cancel it any time. Just, I just need a couple of board members' votes. Well, I think that is totally inappropriate and was wrong. And so we brought it up, the current folks, myself, Ms. Healy, and Dr. Chase brought it up to say, you know, now, however, if there's something, a catastrophe happens, and all seven, or all 14 members, the Board of Supervisors, um, uh, seven members and seven members of the school board says we can't do this project well, we have to do another project um, and, and this has to stop that was the initial suggestion that I gave but this 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 you know I'm, I'm gonna stop because the oversight committee feels like it that that to me didn't make any sense and that's when mr. Foley said well why do we even have that in there it's just like extra words that hey if, if the Board of Supervisors and the school board want to stop a project, they'll stop a project. Why do we need to say it? It's almost like, hey, you know, no matter, just, just remember, whatever you do, we, we, three votes and I'll, we'll stop this. And so that's why it was changed to, to, to make sense. Now, 
Okay, thank you, Mr. McOsker. Well, is there a desire on the board to proceed with a vote on this motion or to uh, consider deferring this along with the prior agenda item? I'd, I'd like to defer it to uh, the same session that we would discuss both of these issues. Is that, yeah. I see Ms. Egan mm -hmm. shaking Second. her head. Yeah. Yes. All right, so th is that a substitute motion? Y yes, I'd like to make a substitute <laughs> motion. All right, so we have a substitute motion to defer this item. Second, Second by Ms. Young. Yes. Um, any discussion? All in favor of the motion to defer this to the same meeting that we uh, have the prior agenda item on. Um, and Ms. Hall, we will schedule that for now a two hour work session. So we will <laughs> definitely need something to eat. Yeah, I was getting ready to we'll say get you better dinner. have some food. That's right, that's right. Tell them <laughs> the, the one that gets, that's somewhere on 95. <laughs> All right, all in favor of the no motion crashes. to defer this item, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Now, oh, yeah, Mr. McOsker, FYI, um, we were going to have food tonight because we started at 5, but there was this horrible check. backup and Take accident. Out. Something happened on the interstate, and our food never got here. Ms. Healy, a point yes. of privilege, can we have a quick bathroom break? I apologize. Um, can we, or well, can we just, why don't we just okay. take the next action okay. item, and then, you know, if we want to have a break before information, we can do that. Uh, uh, that sure brings us okay. to 10.05, discuss the school board member code of conduct. Do we have a motion? Uh, motion to approve. Do we have a second? Uh, and could you explain what we're, you, your motion to approve is, Ms. Egan? Uh, well, it's, of course there's no action on it. It was for information tonight. Right. So it was moved by Ms. Yes. Young, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. So um, there's no second, but I would like to say a few words, if I might. Well, do you, can you tell us what your, your um, motion is to approve? Well, the, what, I, what I was asking the board to do, it, it, since it's on for action, it, it's an up or down vote. Do we pass the gavel when we talk about things that are related to development? Uh, any proffer discussions, redistricting, um, capacity could be an issue. I don't know. So I sent out the information, and I thought it was all going to be on, it, uh, what's that por portion of the? Information. No, the, the place where you have to um, authenticate to get in, to see the board. attachments. Oh, the board executive board. section? Yeah, well, I thought that's where it was going. Right. So that was an opportunity for you guys to see what it was that I was talking about. So let me be, be very, very clear about something. Ms. Healy, I don't have any ill will towards you whatsoever. This, had, this has nothing to do with me liking you. I think you're a fine chairman. I think you're a fine person. I like you. There's nothing, I, there's, you know what happened three years ago. I am acting at the will of my constituents, the w and I've heard from them loud and clear. So this was nothing personal. As a matter of fact, I even put in the agenda item that you, that you are a good chairman, that you are a good school board member. I, and anybody out there who says that this is personal, and a, they don't know what's in my heart, so don't listen to anything that they're saying. This, this has nothing to do with any of that. This was me acting at the request of my constituents to change things so that we don't have another lawsuit, so that we don't have any more people getting up here and kind of pointing their finger at you like they did the last time. I, I was, that made me uncomfortable. So I looked at it and I thought, well, you know what? Dwayne's a fine vice chairman. Let him take the gavel and, you know, we can just go on with our business. I didn't know that, I didn't think passing the gavel was a big deal. I thought that's what the vice chair was for. There were times that I sat next to Holly and I was the vice chair and she wanted to vote on something or make a motion on something. She would hand me the gavel. So I, see, I, I understand where this is going, and I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings or if you thought this was a personal attack. It's not. I like you. <laughs> I've always liked you. Thank you. So, you know, what's the will of the board? Do, we don't, I don't have a second, so it dies. Well, if right? we can have a, a second for purposes of um, discussion that may be well, then we could yeah, take a vote on it. Um, I'll second uh, uh, for purposes of discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Chase. So now we can have further discussion. Then, Dr. Chase, do you have anything you want to sure. say? Sure. Um, I guess my concern is that the, the issue was um, an appearance of impropriety. And I, I guess, you know, in, in reading Ms. Egan's comments, um, there was something about several comments came across social media. Um, 
And I don't really use several comments on social media to make my decisions. Um, and I really question whether something that somebody writes in social media um, should be considered about the appearance. And, and Ms. Decatur mentioned in her comments earlier that if anybody had a thought that there was an appearance of impropriety, she would recuse herself. Well, we've been elected to represent our constituents. And just because there's an appearance of something, that doesn't mean there's a reality of something. And for me to not represent the people who elected me because somebody made a comment on social media um, that is not true, um, I would not be carrying out my responsibilities. And so I, I kind of have a problem with, with our setting the standard there. Um, so that, that's sort of my comment. Thank you. Ms. Hazard, do you have any comments? Um, I do. I think this is a tough issue for all of us. I sat during those um, awful um, redistricting hearings and heard the hateful things that were said. I sat with you at the Garrisonville one, which to me was the hardest place to ever sit um, and listen. I think that this issue is one of self-governance within ourselves, of what we expect of ourselves as a board. And maybe that is the issue. To me, the, um, the motion and how it's on here doesn't really say what I, I think is being asked. It says to discuss the school board member code of conduct. I think we do need to discuss it. I think it is something that we do need to look at. I do, I understand Dr. Chase's comments about that we are elected to represent our district, but there's an, another part of us also that we are represented as a board of seven people, of how we are viewed as an entire board. And I think that, I hope it's never a tension. That's something we have to wrestle with um, in, in general. Um, and so I think that, um, I think it's hard for us to make that, but I do believe that there are concerns in general, and it may be broader, uh, you know, than that um, about, things that we do, things that we say, that maybe that is something we have to discuss. But I think we have two, well, more than two roles, but one is our individual representation and our representation as a board to make sure that we are above reproach. And I think we all strive to do that. That doesn't mean we always meet it. I think we always, I hope, as a board try to. I think it's been a um, difficult year um, for a variety of, of things. We have a brand new superintendent. I hope we look at doing um, uh, retreats and things to get us together as a board. I think any time that you have a vacancy, and please know this is no disrespect to Dr. Benson, I certainly work with him, but Dr. Kisner and I actually talked about it in our discussion. When you become and you know you have another place to be, us in the military suffer from, or at least my husband used to call it, the short timer disease. So I think that in that um, vacancy, we may have lost the cohesiveness as a board. And I may be kind of saying some of what Ms. Decatur said, that I think we need to address that as a board. I am not going to suggest that it be done in the governance committee meeting. I, I actually, there are a lot of things I believe that committees are best for, <laughs> some of it cutting through the stuff. But I do believe it's an issue that we need to, as a board, examine. And I think that um, that's fair to, for us to, to do. Um, so I'm not sure, like right now, the emotion is to discuss board member conduct. I think we should discuss 
the um, board member conduct, you know, in general. I'm not sure it needs to be tonight, but I believe that that discussing it, but not, it, it, to me it doesn't solve anything tonight. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but, the, I, but I, did you repeat them? Yes, ma'am. Um, actually, the motion on the table at this point is to pass the gavel when the school board discusses. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, then I must. Development related. Development related. Topic. Okay, I apologize. And There's I no second. Did not so hear, I did not read No, it, it was second. Oh, it was, right. It's discussion. been seconded. And, and it was actually on the agenda for action at the last meeting, but um, Ms. Egan asked to defer it so she could get her materials um, to all the board members prior to the, the discussion. And it, it was actually on the um, agenda in August as well. So it's, it's, it's been before the, um, the board for some time. Ms. Hazard, were you finished with your comments? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm rereading. All right, well, I'm, Mr. McOsker. This is not a... Uh, does Ms. Young wanna go? Sure. Uh, Ms. Young will go. Hey, why, ladies, why do you want Ms. Young to go first? first? Ladies first, okay, great. <laughs> um, I was listening to um, Member Hazard talk about code of conduct. I believe that when I first came on board, um, I remember seeing um, the, the, the school board in action and um, you know, I saw some things that I didn't like and uh, one of the first meetings that I had, I, I brought it up. As a matter of fact, I went to uh, Chairwoman Hill and I said, hey, I would like to bring this up on the agenda. And we, we put it on the agenda, remember? Mm -hmm. And you uh, coached me to take it to the governance committee and, and I did, but nothing happened with it. I brought it to the governance committee. So, um, so here we are today with an, a code of conduct past the gavel. Well, um, my take on this is that we do need to adhere to the rules of the VSBA code of conduct, striving to always demonstrate appropriate behavior to a public and uh, as school members. We all have different qualities that we bring to the board. You know, some of us have day care, uh, day school experience. Some of us has real estate experience. Some of us have broker experience, law, government, technology, and education. I think that um, you know the code of conduct is how we behave and how we also treat each other. Um, I asked Chairwoman Ahila on one occasion that I thought a when a subject came up that um, a board member may have to recuse his or herself. And um, you know, she said, you know, I, I, I see how you're thinking and um, I appreciate you bringing that up, but she felt that that person, if that person felt that they needed to recuse themselves, she had so much faith and trust with that person that they would recuse themselves on their own, um, you know, because of that conflict of interest. Uh, so I will ask the same of the chairwoman herself. If she believes that she is abiding by the rules in addition, she had served 19 or 18 years, you said, and over six of those in chairmanship. So I believe we can trust that she cares about our students as a whole and our community to ensure our students are getting excellent education in Stafford County. So I trust that if something comes up, that um, she would do what's right. Uh, I, I trust her in that. I trust my school board members because we are a team and we vote as a team and we, when we walk out of here, um, we, whichever her way we vote, uh, we will say to a constituent or somebody that asks us, yes, I didn't vote that way, but the board voted, and that's the end of it. We are not to talk uh, behind each other's back or at some cafe or wherever bad about each other. It doesn't look good. Um, we need strength in numbers, especially when we go to the Board of Supervisors to fight for something. We need to fight for each other, okay? I want to be able to fall behind like they do in those little, um, those little, uh, what they, they, the, the programs that they have in, at work where you fall and they catch you. I want somebody to catch you. I know I'm a little heavy, but <laughs> please, do, do catch me. Gotcha. I, I, I'll catch you all, okay? I got you all's back. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Young. All right, Mr. Os McOsker, your turn. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's great. Hey, so um, I thought this, was, this issue was, was killed, uh, but so we wouldn't discuss it on, on the dais, but okay. So let's, let's play. So here we have, on several occasions, nasty Facebook comments about people on the board by some board members, nasty emails about 
votes on the board that we've made. Um, just pretty nasty stuff all the way around. And then I have the last superintendent, Dr. Benson, telling a, a, a board a, a board of supervisor member or anything to make Magosker miserable, I'm good with, or something to that effect. And so it was this, this culture of nastiness and connivory needs to stop. We come out of there, we vote. You know something? When Dwayne McOsker has a problem with somebody on the board, and I want to say it in public, I'm going to say it in public just like I'm saying it right now. And when I leave the board, whether it's next year or 10 years from now, if, if anything, they can say, I don't like him, but he's going to tell me the truth, and he's going to tell me how he feels. But you know what? Some things are better left to talk about between each other. You know, between each other, one-on-one. -on -one. I've got a problem with this, and this is what it is. But, but, but this nonsense of, of attacking board members has to stop. And I just got an email about some of our board members today by an old supervisor that's going to probably have to come back into a public session. Okay? Because it's, it it's just something that's not very good. But I'm not going to say it here, and I'm not going to say it online. I'm going to talk about with our council about it and, and talk to our board about what we need to do about it. But this Facebook attacks and, and, this, and these email attacks and these attacks in public have to stop. And I don't like, what, um, I don't like the, the issue of I've got two... Uh, Facebook members that say uh, this board member is doing this and then it, it comes into public session, I think that's disgusting. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. McOsker. And I have, I have a brief statement that I want to, um, to put in the record. I think those of you who have known me and seen me have never seen me with a written statement, but <laughs> <Yeah>. tonight <laughs> I want to make sure that, that I, I say what I want to say. But before I begin this statement, I, I, I've, I've I don't consider this personal. It certainly appears personal, and maybe I feel like it's a little personal, but I, I know, and I, I respect every member on this board, and I think everyone here cares about the schools and cares about the kids. That's why we spend the time that we spend here. So I, I just wanted to, to put this on, and I, um, if you want to time me, Miss Hall, I don't think it's going to take three minutes. <laughs> At least I hope not. Um, the VSBA Code of Conduct provision under discussion states, I will refrain from using the board position for personal or partisan gain and avoid any conflict of interest or the appearance of impropriety. During my tenure on the school board, I have never used my position for personal or partisan gain. With respect to the reference in the code of conduct regarding avoiding the appearance of impropriety, I searched for the definition of impropriety. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines impropriety as an improper or indecorous act or remark, especially an unacceptable use of word or of language, and the quality or state of being improper. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines improper as not in accordance with accepted rules or standards, especially of morality or honesty. My actions as a member of the school board have been consistently proper and I have not seen or heard any substantive credible example of an alleged improper action on my part. As noted earlier this evening, with respect to any alleged conflict of interest or impropriety arising from my law firm's representation of plaintiffs in suits against the Stafford County Board of Supervisors, I reiterate that none of the actions that my firm has filed, including those currently pending in the courts, have anything to do with school board policy, nor do any of the actions affect school capacity or proffers, or have any direct or indirect impact on Stafford County Schools. I have served with 25 different school board members over the past 19 years. Each member of this board, past and present, has brought his or her own unique skills and experience to the position. Over the years, I have often utilized my legal skills and experience for the benefit of the school board, 
such as with respect to contracts, policies, leases, and deeds, as Mr. Horan well knows. <laughs> In closing, I ask that the board permit me to carry out fully the responsibilities of chairman for which I was elected unanimously by this board at the organizational meeting in January of this year. So if there's no further discussion, I would call for the vote. Um, all those in favor of the motion to pass the gavel, uh, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. No. No. Madam Clerk, will you poll the board? Dr. Chase? No. Ms. Decatur? Absent. Uh, Ms. Egan? Yes. Ms. Hazard? I am going to abstain on this vote for the, and I will state my reasons. I believe that we have something we need to, to discuss. I believe that this is something that needs to be discussed. I believe that I have the information to make that because I highly respect Ms. Egan. But I believe, and somewhat based on some of the comments by Mr. Um, McCosker, I think we need to meet and talk about this. I think it is not, to me, a vote exactly issue. It's a discussion issue, as it was said in there. And I believe that that is how we need to discuss, how to handle it tonight. Ms. Healy? No. Mr. McCosker? No. And Ms. Young? Nay. Madam Chair, this motion carries. All right, that brings us to the information items. Ms. Uh, Hazard, did you still want your five minute break? Um, yeah, I need one. <laughs> All right, five minutes, and we have, a, um, we have a Halloween basket of candy here if anyone needs any. Um, mm -hmm. Ms. Ms. Young is sharing with all of us. Thank you. All right, five minutes. Did you steal that from um, I think, yeah. Glenda?
Well, do you want to, if you want to just make a motion to move it, then we can have a motion and discuss okay. it. Do, we, do you really have to explain it? What? I, thought I, we I was going to give you the, the really Cliff Notes version, believe me. I'm, I, but I feel like we have to <laughs> well, say something. Do we want to move it? Yeah, I but would, if we I move it like to action, then we can have a we can have a I would motion like to, and then have a discussion. I would like to yeah. make a so motion to move this to action. Perfect. Second. <laughs> All right. All in favor of the motion to move the uh, school board's FY20 legislative priorities to action, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. All right, do we have a motion? I move that we accept the legislative committee's um, let's see, uh, priorities. All right, we have FY a motion 20. by Dr. Chase, second by Ms. Young. Do we have a discussion? I'll no. just do the clip a, notes. I'll give a quick one. The reason this is, this was brought to the board in um, June as part of a committee report. So these have been seen before. There have been two additions since um, interactions with the v VSBA. Um, because we do not have a paid lobbyist, uh, uh, fr from the school board, we have graciously been allowed to at least somewhat use the services of our counterparts across mm -hmm. the street. Mm -hmm. They are going to be pushing their legislative agenda for approval at that first meeting in October, and I'm more than happy to ride on their coattails, but I would like to make sure that these priorities are part of their consideration to see if they'll fund it with their lobbyists. So it, it's a money-saving <laughs> measure. All right, so any other discussion? I would like for us to have our own legislator at some point in time in the future, but it's very, very important, um, you know, especially for cost to compete. Um, I'm, I'm working on that right now. Holly, I'll talk to you about it yep. later, but mm -hmm. um, I had some emails back and forth from um, Governor Northam, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll share it as, as it um, becomes a little bit more mm -hmm. Um, that it's happening, uh, I will share it with the board, but I'm working on that on the back end. Okay, sounds great. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the school board's FY20 legislative priorities as stated in agenda item 11.01, .01. please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, information item 11.02, .02, approve the school board's FY20 budget priorities. Dr. Chase. Um, I didn't make a lot of changes, but I incorporated the changes, I hope, from the discussion that we had. There may be one or two wording things that need to be fixed. But, um, and so I don't know if anybody has more comments at this time or wants to give me comments later um, that I can incorporate. Well, this, this is some for information, okay, but it will, it will be on the agenda next uh, time for okay. action. Okay. So if anyone has any um, further request for uh, revisions or okay, additions to this um, Dr. Chase. send them to um, Dr. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say thank you Dr. for Chase. incorporating um, exceptional professionals I really like that term thank you Dr. Kisner did you have anything you wanted to comment no. on this one although I will tell you mm -hmm. these budget outlines mm -hmm. will be remarkably helpful as I mm -hmm. develop my budget and I see significant alignment in the direction I was heading anyway. That's so I may just idea. choose to use this and not have my own yeah. competing set of um, items. And, and thank you for your support um, and your assistance in helping us. Yes. And and thank you, Dr. Chase and the uh, committee yes. for, for putting this together. I com think com it's com very com well The committee well consists of Jamie Decatur and Pamela Young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought I heard that earlier this evening. <laughs> It's yes. getting late and I'm I hungry. said you I'm and sorry. your committee. Your committee being <laughs> Young and Mr. I'm Kater. sorry. I'm just hungry. All I'm right. Sorry. I'm sorry. And did you have something to add, Mr. McOsker? No, he doesn't. <laughs> Harry Cohn <Tom> doesn't. <laughs> yes. Yes? Have you, guys have you guys recognized Mr. McOsker yet? I, yes. Well, we're, we're trying hard. <laughs> okay. Hey, listen. Uh, a great document done by the group. Um, just for the record, my two priorities, as they are almost every year, is going to be educational, professional uh, pay, you know, teachers and staff, employee pay, and uh, reduce class sizes. That's going to be my two priorities. Uh, and, and, and then, because all the goals on that document are, are awesome, but going into the, as I say every year, going into the budget season, we really should kind of examine and then say, hey, here are our three priorities for this budget year. And because, as we all know, once uh, money starts getting taken away or added, 
uh, if we have priorities, it makes it a lot easier to not get sidetracked with with, with other um, competing things that come in from left and from right. That's it. Other than that, great job. Thank you, Mr. McOsker. This will come back to us uh, for action at the next meeting. Okay. That brings us to 11.03, approve the fourth year of a five-year policy services agreement between the Stafford County School Board and the Virginia School Boards Association for policy services in the amount of $3,750 from budgeted FY19 operating funds. Any questions about this? Uh, this is no objection. We'll put this on the consent agenda for the next meeting. I don't think there's any urgency that it um, be you know, be, be approved right now. Okay. Um, information item 11.04, approve the superintendent's proposed revisions to policy 1120, board superintendent communications. And we've discussed this at the um, work session earlier this evening. Anything anyone would like to add? Uh, I know Dr. Uh, Kisner is going to be making some She's revisions make to some that. Revision, so and we'll I, wait until it comes right, out. and I appreciate Mrs. Egan bringing up the school board advisory committees because I think that it would be helpful to address that here as well for the benefit of the committees as well as the the staff. And and the, the example she used was the committee with 35 members, perhaps more. There's some more uh, applying every day. Um, that, that we want to certainly respect um, the communication policy, uh, particularly with that being a board committee. Mm -hmm. So if you could, you know, add that in yeah, there, I'll you know, and, and if anyone else thinks of anything between now and next week that you'd like um, Dr. Kisner to address, please, you know, contact him directly. All right, that brings us to 1105. Approve an energy audit agreement with Train Energy Services to identify energy conservation and or operational efficiency measures through the energy performance contracting process. Does anybody have any questions about this one? Dr. Chase. And this is just a, a question for Mr. Haran. So we're going to spend almost $200,000 on this. Are we going to save $200,000 or more dollars from what they do for us? Well, absolutely. As, <laughs> as, as you know, the, the $193,000 is a cost if we don't proceed. It's a cost as part of the process. Uh, it will be rolled into the overall savings, the guaranteed maximum savings, and what we uh, project to save on an annual basis for a certain period of time. So if we go, if the school board elects to go forward with the process, and we'll bring that back to you probably, um, we're hoping in the December, January timeframe uh, after the audit's been done, and we have some guaranteed numbers, some hard numbers to present to you that will articulate the guaranteed amount of savings per year that these efforts will undertake. Mr. Horan? Yes, ma'am. Young. Yes, Ms. Young. Um, train. Is that what we're using? We're using train? Well, we're, 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 we are recommending that uh, the selection committee selected train out of uh, a number of um, <coughs> firms that um, provided proposals. We went through a process where we have evaluation criteria. We selected uh, train after we down selected to three vendors, and those three vendors came in and provided oral presentations and the selection committee selected train, and that's what we're recommending to you. So you know what I'm getting ready to ask you. I know maybe there's oh. no f women firm. Uh, yes, ma'am. Or uh, <clears throat> a company in Stafford County. Um, well, this particular company, Train, is from the fr Richmond, Virginia area. Okay. But there were none that were based here in Stafford, okay. just for your information. Um, but they were all sprinkled out through the state of Virginia, and many of them were uh, national firms, which most of them were national firms. But all of these firms came off of the uh, state uh, contract mm -hmm. that uh, was pre-approved by the state of Virginia, and so um, we provided that RFP was open to all of those members. I want to say there's 15 to 18 uh, potential candidates of which I think it's articulated in the agenda item how many actually attended um, our pre-conference and then how many submitted proposals. I don't want to tell you the wrong number, um, but we uh, I think there's probably double digits, the ones that provided proposals. So when was the last time we had an audit done? Uh, energy audit, the last one was, I believe, done in the 2008, 2009 timeframe. Don't quote me, but essentially, we've had two EPCs um, since I've been here, and I believe 
uh, the first one in the 2006-7 time when we uh, initiated that. That was the first EPC that mm -hmm. Stafford County um, ventured into, um, and it was spearheaded actually by our CFO at the time. Um, I, I know we could write these off in our taxes. I don't know how the school system works, but is there? There's nowhere we could write these off, right? We're n we don't pay taxes. I know. I, I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but we could write these off in our taxes. Uh -oh. You don't have to. You don't something. have to call me out. But um, <laughs> yeah, I knew that. But I'm saying, there's there a way money. how we could? Uh, yeah. Okay. But uh, as long as the kids are not freezing, you know, in the in the winter time because we didn't turn on the heat early enough for our kids, I'm okay with this. Very good, thank you, ma'am. Miss Young. Young. She's, she, she prefers her name rather than ma'am. Yes, Miss Young. He's trying to make me feel old. <laughs> That's right, I'm the ma'am. I'm the old one. Older. Uh, all right, that brings us to the last information item, 11.06, approve the award of a professional services contract in the amount of $167,000 using VSPA funds to Ascent Engineering Group of Roanoke, Virginia for designing construction administration services for the repair mechanical systems at Rock Hill Elementary School. Do you have any questions? Any questions? No, I have no questions. Does anyone have any questions? Get her done. <laughs> Rock Hill. So. All right, no, no, no questions. Um, the our next meeting of the school board will be October 9th uh, at 7 p.m. And I would ask the board to to think about setting aside um, about eight hours for us to to sit down as a board and perhaps use that as our time to reflect mm -hmm. on what our goals are, our relationships, our communications. I think it could. I think it could, could help. Um, and and, and uh, well, this is uh, it's a it's a possibility. We may not need that long, but you know we've we've tried different things in the past. And you know, one point because it was hard for people to take a whole day, we'd set, we'd start meeting at say four o'clock on Friday afternoon. We'd have we you know we we'd meet, then we'd have a dinner, and you know meet till about nine, and then we'd come back on Saturday and spend about half a day Saturday. So we're not committing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a full day, which which is hard because everyone has a lot going is on. Going to be outside of Stafford, pretend we. Well, I don't pretend? know. Well, we can. Um, you know, Are we, you know, we, we can talk. I, I think we're we probably can't afford to do. Um, we do have a credit coming from Let's that meal for tonight, though. Well, we will have to ask our legal counsel, but the statute says that if you're if there's th if there's three or more of you, it's a board meeting. Yeah. Well, that's and fine. We have to have it in the open at a place where. But that's fine. But you know we're on. But if we have it out of town, that may not be. Well, I'm, I'm not suggesting it necessarily be out of town. Yeah, but, I mean, we've had we've had meetings. We've got the hospital center has that nice, comfortable room. I it, it just would give us an opportunity to to be able to you know to talk in a more informal setting. Yes, it would be a formal meeting, but it would not be sitting up here with the microphones and everything. Well, I think I think that would be good, and you're also going to um, look for that two-hour chunk for the two items that we deferred. All right, so we'll see each other. Actually, we'll see each other Monday. Is that that's not on here for the? Uh, don't we have the? Um, it's on there. The Monday advisory Monday. committee. Where is it? Monday, right? At six. Monday at six p.m. And this. Week. Where is it on here? Look I'm looking at an. Oh, okay, but it's an, it's announcement of upcoming meetings yeah. but technically we'll 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 be back on monday at six o'clock with our advisory committees okay all right thank you very much we're now adjourned i mean I, I, do i like to is different versus half